Okay, thank you very much, Alf. Uh, very nice to be here. Uh, so I guess I'm one of the few here from the surface treatment clusters because everyone else went to Scania for uh, oh, seeing it live. Uh, so you will have to uh, bear with me in the virtual world instead. So we will go into the paint shop anyhow. So I will present uh, a project uh, which is ongoing uh, in the surface treatment uh, Vinova FFE cluster. Uh, so my name is Fredrik Ilvik, so I'm the vice director of the Fraunhofer Schalmer Center in, in Gothenburg and I also head the computation engineering department at, at that center. So first, just give you a little bit of a background before we go into the, into the pre-treatment. So we started these uh, virtual paint shop activities uh, almost 15 years ago. So the aim was uh, then and, and still is to, to be able to simulate all the key processes in an automotive paint shop. Namely the spray painting, uh, this putting out of the ceiling materials, the ovens and, and what we are finally getting at now, the, the electro coating and other pre-treatment processes. So we want to simulate all these processes in the same uh, computational platform. Uh, so if you know uh, FCC, you know that we, we have developed the IPS software platform and that's what we are using for this as well for the virtual paint shop processes. And the idea is of course to be able to move basically the physical factory into the computer to be able to, to make predictions and so on by simulation instead of having to resort to prototypes and a lot of physical testing. So, so that's what we want to do, and, and these are quite complex processes. It, it, it's quite a challenge, and, 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 and for some reason, so we started with spray painting, which is probably the, uh, the most difficult one when, when it comes to simulation. So what you see here is, is the painting of a, of a Volvo car. So it's the sort of actual uh, robot motion that, that you see, and then what we simulate is more or less each and every paint, paint droplet, how they travel from the applicator to the target, and at the target they start to build up the thickness. And, what, and this is then like a support tool for the, uh, the guys or girls who are programming the paint robots, so that they can, instead of doing a lot of physical testing, they can use the software instead to find a good enough motion and process parameters to get the result with, with the quality that they, they want, with a good enough paint finish. So it, it's quite a complex process. You need to simulate the air flows. As, as you may know, uh, you're using a so-called electrostatic rotary bell, uh, commonly at least, that will actually charge the paint particles. So you have to take the electrostatic field into account. And then, of course, the paint particles will interact with both the airflow and the electrostatic field. So you need to solve for that coupling, coupling as well. And, and in, in our tools, so we not only simulate the physical process, we could also do the complete offline programming of the, of the paint robots. So another of the uh, robotized application in the paint shop is, is where you put out the ceiling material. So also quite, quite a challenge when it comes to the offline programming, but also when it comes to the actual physical simulation of the material. It has quite a complex rheology in this material, meaning how, it, how the viscosity of the material depends on shear rate and so on. Uh, so, so this is for sealing material. Uh, so together with ALF, we have an ongoing hemming project where in, instead of sealing, this will be glue in, in, in that apl application. So just a much more complex uh, rheology model and, and then of course some, uh, uh, some other folding and mechanical operation on, on top of that. But this is uh, what you can do for, for sealing. Final application before I go into the electro coating is, is ovens. So, so this is a, the top coat oven in, in Umeå. Uh, so here you can see we have scanned, uh, we have scanned the oven. And, and the colors here indicate how the, how the temperature uh, gradually increase as the, uh, as the truck cab in this case travel through the oven. So blue means uh, slightly lower temperature. So you can clearly see here some of the, where you have like thicker materials at the bottom, for example, that will take longer time to, to cure. So here, interesting things also, when you have uh, electrical hybrid cars, you need a 
much more support structures that will take longer time to cure. And these are things that you can then analyze in, in the software. Here it's a convecting oven where it, it blows, blows hot air on the, on the object. So maybe you can, by redirecting these nozzles and so on, get a, get a better curing of, of your, um, uh, on, your, on your car body or, or track cab. So just free movies of, of, of some of the other applications that we have already touched upon in, in the paint shop. But uh, for today, I will spend most, most of the time on this ongoing project. So simulation of, of electric coating. Uh, so you can see the, uh, the partners. So we are quite happy to not only have the automotive companies involved in the project, but also some, uh, some suppliers and job coders, and also IKEA is, is among the partners in the project. As research partners, we from uh, FCC and then RICE are also involved doing a lot of the um, measurements and, and characterizations. So with all the people in, in the, uh, in the uh, of all the surface treatment people in, in, the, in the Scania paint shop today, uh, I should say maybe some words about the process. So what you do, as you see indicated in the picture, uh, you submerge uh, the car, in that case, in, into a big bath with an electrolyte. Uh, so the car is in that case grounded. Then you have anodes in, in this bath, and then you put a high voltage on the anodes, which cause a current in the bath. And, and the charged paint particles in the electrolyte will then start to sort of travel or be sucked towards the target so that you start to build up a, uh, a, layer, a, a paint layer basically on the, on the object. So this is, uh, this is used for corrosion protection. And, and one of the characteristics here is that it, uh, the, more, uh, the more deposited particle you have, sort of then it, it insulates and then the particles travel somewhere else. So typically you get, the, you get a fairly uniform layer in, in this process, which is of course what you, what you want. And you can yeah, see some of the usual benefits of course of being, being able to do simulations. If we look more in particular, then of course it's a corrosion protecting process. You want to make sure that you have liquid everywhere so that you have contact in all cavities and so on where you really need this this layer also sort of the the opposite is important that you don't only want to sort of have the access of the liquid you also you also must make sure that you can drain the liquid because typically there are many baths of this kind different chemistry and you don't want to carry liquid from this bath to the next bath because then you, then you will destroy the uh, the chemistry or have to have to play around a little bit to, to get to stable production again. As, so, this, so that's sort of typical challenges. We need to make sure that you have the correct access of the liquid, the correct drainage, and then yet that you have enough film thickness everywhere. So, so that's, that, that are, are the challenges. And, and of course, then we want to do it with uh, modeling and simulation uh, to be able to su support that. And, and uh, then of course, Unfortunately for us, or fortunately because we, we like doing this, is that uh, well, there are quite a few challenges when, when doing modeling and simulation as well, of course. So first of all, as you saw, I mean, we have, we have, a, big, uh, we have a big object, a car or a truck cab, for example, uh, an even larger bath, of course. And then, so, since what I mentioned, cavities and so on are important, then, of course, also small gaps and openings are also important in the simulation because it, it will make a difference if, if I can resolve this small hole if liquid enters or not, of course. So, so we have a really big separation of scales, uh, different material combinations. It's, it's a few minutes in, in physical time, uh, the process, so it, that also makes a challenge. And, and, and then we have this multi-phase flow that you need to keep track of air pockets where you don't have the, uh, uh, will, where you don't will have any buildup of, of, the, of the film thickness at all, and, and this access and drainage that I, that I talked about. And then, of course, the whole electrochemistry to, to be able to simulate the actual buildup. So to be able to do this, of course, we, we need to do some, some assumptions and, and uh, you try to make as few as possible. So, okay, we said first, okay, let's, let's at least decouple this uh, fluid part from the, from the electrochemis electrochemical part. So, so that was sort of the first. So let, let's first focus at 
the fluid access and drainage problem and then sort of predict where do we have uh, interaction with the liquid and the, and the, and the sort of triangles on, on the car body and, and for how long. Uh, so solve that problem first and then let that give input to, to an electrochemistry simulation. So then basically you need to solve uh, a multi-phase flow, meaning that you need to solve for the, for the air part and you need to solve for the, for the fluid part, basically. So then at, at FCC we have developed the CFD solver uh, that we utilized, so-called so -called Iberflow. So I will not go into too much into the detail. Only maybe fun thing is that with the same kind of, of uh, CFD solver you can uh, sort of attack this problem or you can simulate the airflow over a big part of Gothenburg. Uh, so that's sort of the, the beauty of mathematics in, 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 my, in my eyes at least, that you can, if you have a good enough solver you can do completely different things with it. So I said we will go into the virtual world, but of course to be able to uh, validate, wow, this big sound. Uh, I like the counting as well, when they are sort of one, two, three, and then pull the plugs. So, so this is something we did then too. So this is a, a car door from, uh, uh, we, cannot, we cannot bear the sound, I will turn to the next slide. But the, this, uh, so this was one of the first experiments we did. So, so we had that, uh, that car door and then uh, a number of uh, sort of drainage holes and then we opened the holes and then our task was then to show that our models are able to, in a transient way, able to capture how long time it takes to, to drain the door basically. So, so just as a first test case. Uh, so, so this is how it can look like if, if you do it in the software and here sort of the surface here is the surface between sort of the air part and the and the liquid part, and you can see as the door comes up and, and how it then, uh, how the liquid drains, drains out. And for this particular angle, all, all, all liquid will be, will be drained out, as we'll see on these, on these pictures. So this is basically one, no, three, two, and, and one hole uh, that, that, what you, what, that were used to drain the door. And, and you can see four different experiments and the, the solid line are, are the measurements. So you can see that, as I said, we drain all the liquid uh, that we predict and, and we also have a good, good agreement with the measurements in, in terms of the transient, uh, transient behavior. We did the same kind of analysis uh, for, uh, for a tilted door. Uh, so you see again we captured transient and, and here is, as you see, of course, uh, depending on the location of the hole you will not you will or you will not drain the complete car door also, also in that case. So we are, were, despite the fact that, that we, this was only a door, we were quite satisfied, but this has, and, and the results are, are accurate, but it has one big problem. It's, it's way, way too, too slow. I mean, to, to replace the door with the complete uh, truck cab, no, uh, that, that will take forever. So, so, so this was really accurate, but uh, unfortunately far too slow to be industrially useful. So okay, back to the, to the drawing board. Uh, I said as few approximation as possible, uh, but uh, we need to do some more to, to be able to get to sort of realistic simulation times of, of a few hours of, of this draining process. Uh, so here, is, instead of sort of a really physics-based model where we really looked at this multi-phase flow, here we have instead sort of talked to the companies what, what is most important for you. Uh, is it to capture the complete transient or is it to know how much liquid is actually left, for example, or where do actually the, uh, the, uh, the liquid end up? So can we then do instead a quasi-static geometric approximation? Uh, and to, to, to be able to produce the results in a, in a much, much faster way. So, so that's what we, have, what we have implemented. So you lose a bit of, 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 uh, of accuracy, but actually you, you capture what's, what's most important here. So we re then redid the, uh, the, uh, the door cases just to make sure that we, uh, that we still are accurate. So here, 
refs here means uh, refinements, so how fine basically your computational grid is. Uh, and, and the more you're fine, the, the finer and better accurate uh, it should be if, if, if the model is, 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 is sound, uh, but it, it takes a bit more time, of course. But, but here, given the accuracy of the experiments and so on, we are quite happy also with this much, much faster method. So let's go then to, to, the, more, to the more realistic case. Uh, so this is a track cab from, from Umeå. So you can see the motion. So this is a, a typical so-called so raw dip motion uh, that, that we have got from, from Volvo trucks. So here, when we then are doing the simulation as well, so these are 79 million cells, and here we are down to that we resolve holes of millimeter size. So you remember what I said, I mean, if we should capture access and drainage, we really need to, that, need to go down to that level of resolution, otherwise we can just forget, forget having an accurate answer to this. So this took like six hours. The brute force methods would have been uh, a month, maybe. Uh, and here, actually, when, when the, we are then looking at, after the, after the final motion, uh, only six centiliters of liquid uh, is left. Uh, and you, you can see it, maybe you can see it, uh, these purple uh, small dots are, on some places are where we have some excess liquid left. And you can then say, okay, that wasn't much. No, uh, it, it isn't, because this is a truck uh, uh, in, in production, and then they have put uh, quite a few drainage holes in, in, this, in this car body, or, or truck cab, sorry, to, to be able to drain out the liquid. Uh, so we, we are now working on a more interesting case, so sort of a, a coming model. Uh, I'm not allowed to show that, of course. But then one thing you can actually utilize the software for will be where should I have, I want to have as few drainage holes as possible, where should I locate the hole in order to get down to something like this. So of course Volvo Cars has a, has a similar challenge. Uh, this is how, how they're. Dipping motion looks like similar resolution, uh, and also ah, we can wait and see when it gets out of the bath as well soon. Uh, and you can see this uh, yeah, typical motion with, with that I guess sort of is, is designed, for example, to make sure that this axis and drainage that, that I mentioned that, that you actually get get the liquid in all, all cavities and so on. So also in this case, very little, uh, very little access liquid is, is, is left. But also here it would actually, it would be super interesting, of course, to look at an, at an earlier prototype and, and, uh, and be involved in actually the, the design and placement of the, of the holes. So that was the, the fluid access and drainage. Uh, what we want to also capture is, of course, the, uh, the actual film thickness buildup. Uh, so a bit of mathematics on this slide, I will not go into all the details, but uh, some assumptions also here. We assume that we have constant ion concentration in the bath, uh, which uh, most likely is a, is a fair approximation and local electron neutrality. And, and then it will give us that we have to solve these Gauss and, and, and Ohm's laws. And, and, and then so this is for, for electroplating, as I should say. So we have both electroplating and electrocoating. Uh, so here we also then need, on, on the object, the cathode in this case, uh, we need a model for the, for the current density, uh, so-called butler valmer equation is typically used. And then we have, a free, we have a free parameter, which is the potential drop over this deposited layer. And, and what... Uh, and then Faraday's law of electrolysis to, to, uh, to simulate the actual buildup of the material. But in order to then determine this uh, unknown parameter, the electroplaters have a, a test that they are doing on a daily basis, more or less. Uh, so you can see this uh, sort of small boxes uh, and, and, and you have one... Uh, it's a sl uh, slanted plate in it, so you have different di distances from the, from the anodes to the cathodes, so that you can then put a certain current on and you can then measure the resulting thickness uh, and the current density that you get, 
in order to determine the resistance that, that we needed for the, for, the, for the model. So I will soon wrap up, Alf. Uh, so this is how we can look like if you then look at the hull, uh, at the hull cells. So you have six, six different probes. So if we don't use uh, this Butler and Walmer model, we are quite far off. Uh, simulations are red uh, and, and, the, and the blue, blue measurements. But if we use the model, then we get quite accurate results in, in, terms, of the, uh, in, in terms of the thickness uh, in, in the six probes. So then, of, of course, this was just, just a test. Then we turn to, to the real application. So these are some geometries from Proton. Uh, I think it's some kind of truck, truck geometry. So you can see they put them on, on big hangers. And all, all this part actually goes down into the bath. So with all the, all the components hanged like that. And of course, they, they want to have an even, even film thickness on, on, on those parts. So that we have also simulated. And ah, more interesting on this one. So we can see here that we have three different probes. Uh, so here we are a bit, a bit off. So this is still a work in progress. It's something in the, in the chemistry not quite captured by this quite, quite simple models. Uh, so we have talked to quite a few people on, on what, to, what to add in this model to get, to get it to be even more accurate. But that's, uh, it's about a year left in the project, so this is something we are working on quite, quite heavily uh, at the moment. So, so by that, let me come to the, uh, let me come to the conclusions. Uh, so we're working now doing experiments uh, also at, at IVF on electrocoating, some uh, Volvo cars geometries uh, that they have done in, the, in their lab baths. Then we'll do the, the validation of the big, big objects as well, uh, also for the film thickness. And, and again, our sort of aim is to have a complete uh, virtual paint shop. So this uh, pre-processing part is, is the missing, missing piece. And so far, we have been able to, to spread the software to more than 20 companies uh, that are using, uh, using it for, for, to simulate their paint, paint shop processes. And, and we aim also to have, have the electro coating module in place during, during next year. Uh, so by that, I thank you very much for, for your attention and, and happy to answer any questions that you might have. We have observed some tiny differences between measurements and, and uh, predictions in the first models and then uh, some larger uh, differences here uh, in the ongoing work. Mm. Have you considered uh, using some sort of physics-informed AI in order to close the gap between what you're predicting with the models and what you're observing in, in the measurements? Uh, no, honestly, we haven't, but uh, it could very well be a good idea. Uh, it's, uh, we would need quite a bit of data, I, I suppose, but uh, as, uh, at, at least from, from the sort of small, small measurement that, that they're doing several times a day. Uh, so that is a decent amount of data, at least. Uh, on, the, uh, on sort of the real cases, uh, it will take some convincing to, <laughs> to make them to, to measure enough, uh, I think, but I mean, if we cannot get, I mean, we always try first with a physical or chemical based method uh, or model, but if it doesn't work, then, uh, then of course, well, why not try to see what we can do with the data? I definitely agree, good suggestion. Especially if you come with your model so close already to reality, mm. then the networks that you need in order to close the gap are quite mm. small. It's yeah. not really deep learning and hence the data is rather yeah. limited as compared to what you would mm regularly need for, for deep learning networks. Yeah. But thank you. For mm, thanks. I was just wondering about, I can understand that the fluidic uh, prediction is quite accurate, but what about the air inclusions? Uh, is it predictable or have you not looked at that very much? It's, uh, it's very hard to, uh, to verify. Unfortunately, so I mean, I, I know that the Volvo companies have done some simulations with other tools and they say that they know it's not correct, but uh, it, it's extremely hard to verify. 
you, you cannot, what you can verify is, of course, the, uh, the resulting uh, film thickness that you get, and which sort of indirectly at least indicate that it must have been an, uh, an air pocket. But to actually measure how much air you have in a cavity would be super difficult. But is it the large air cavities or the small ones that are the problem? I, I mean, you would get small air pockets everywhere, like small mm. yeah. inclusions everywhere, and that would have a, give a small mm. hole. But is that... Uh, yeah, probably it depends quite quite a lot on where also where it is on on the object, how how sensitive it is to. Uh, so there are many. Yeah, I mean in, interesting points, and there are many things to to look into. I mean, once we we are, once we are able to to do the simulations, then there are many interesting analyses that that you could make. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. I think that uh, I'm curious that you, in the beginning, talked a bit about uh, going towards more sustain sustainable painting process or something like that. But you didn't include anything on that in your final uh, results. How much, for example, you could improve the process through these calculations or through these simulations? That's just one question. And then uh, I was also wondering uh, two more reflections i mean i don't want to kill of course the the idea of you know doing these um, uh, calculations or this research but have you thought about let's say uh, if you don't have to paint the car at all and then of course uh, okay well that's too radical step for probably uh, can we paint uh, let's say at the f at the stage of uh, plate manufacturing and then you know press them so could we avoid these kind of problems? Are these realistic, you know, uh, thinking or practical, pro uh, you know, approaches? So, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'll try to keep keep them all in my head. If if I start from the uh, from the uh, uh, from from the end, so I think there are, I mean, research going on on so-called inkjet printing activities, where you sort of, uh, yeah, really paint drop by drop in a sense, uh, and and that, of course, for example, gives you no overspray at all. And, and you can do, yeah, it, it's a bit like uh, a bit like Kalanka on on, uh, on Christmas Eve when they paint this chessboard and so on. So this is what you actually can do that with that technology. But I, I think it's still super sensitive to vibrations. It's too slow, uh, so it will take uh, still take quite some years until such a technology will be the sort of the dominating one. Uh, so, so that, that would be my comment on, on that one. When, when it comes to the, to the actual savings of, of using the simulations, it's, uh, it's always, a, I mean, f for us, it, it's mainly, we want to deliver the software tools to, to the companies. It's the companies that use them. We try to get as much information as possible on their savings, but it's, it's hard to, to get really sharp numbers. Uh, it, we had one, one case for, for the ovens uh, with Scania that, that I'm allowed to say that they, they saved almost, almost a minute uh, of their oven time due to, due to some changes they could do in the oven based on the simulation. So, it, so they solved the quality problem, but they could also reduce the cycle time with almost a minute. So, but it's quite rare that we have so sort of sharp numbers on actually what can you uh, what can you solve uh, with, based on the simulations? Yes, I had a slight reflection and then question, more so on the user interface of the software, because we're already dealing with many different softwares that the employees need to become proficient in. Yeah. And this is just one more that would need to be implemented. And people don't want to do that, <laughs> simply put. So uh, take, for example, the... Um, the setup and the preparation for the programming of the robots, for instance. We already have software for that. So would this um, possibly be a product that could be integrated into another software so it could be more easily integrated into something that's already integrated into the company? Yeah, I, actually, I, I didn't have too much of the background, but it's, uh, it, it's quite a big software tool, uh, this IPS software. So. It's like 200, 200 companies in, in the world are using that. So it's, 
it, so it's not a small piece of software and, and our ambition is not to integrate it but have it as a standalone tool. But, but I can say for the, for the paint shop, for example, I mean, some of the things I showed you could do in a sort of commercial CFD software, but then you definitely would have to be an expert on that. What we try to aim for here, the, the users at the industry, they are the engineers at the paint shop. That, that's the ones that we are targeting. And then it has to be a completely different user interface compared to a sort of standard uh, finite element software or something, because that, that would be way too, uh, way too difficult. Or, I mean, have things that they just don't understand. They want to have it much more process oriented. So that's what we are actually targeting here, to, to have it really user friendly. Okay, thank you, Frederick. You give a big hand.